The cervix is a fibromuscular organ that connects between the uterus and the vagina. It measures about 3 to 4 centimeters in length and about 2.5 centimeters in diameter. There is a canal inside the cervix called endocervical canal, and cervical tissue surrounding the endocervical canal is called endocervix. Ectocervix is the outer part of the cervix protruding inside the vaginal lumen. The opening between the cervix and the uterus is called internal os, while external os is the opening between the cervix and the vagina. The inner surface of the endocervix is irregular, formed of peaks and inward foldings. These inward foldings are called endocervical cramps. On the other hand, the ectocervix has a smooth surface. Now let's examine the epithelial lining of the endocervix. As you see, the endocervix is lined by a single layer of columnar cells. These columnar cells contain basally located nuclei. There is also a less clear layer of cells called reserve cells. Reserve cells are present under columnar epithelium inside cervical stroma. And here is a histologic picture of the endocervix where you can see the single layer of columnar cells with basally located nuclei. And these two arrows are pointing toward reserve cells. The function of reserve cell is to divide and multiply, forming new columnar cells to replace all the degenerated ones. In fact, reserve cells are bipotent, I mean they form columnar epithelium, and under certain circumstances they can form squamous epithelium. There are blood capillaries inside the villous part of the endocervix, and these blood vessels are separated from the surface by a single layer of columnar cells. These features of the endocervix, I mean the irregular surface, and the blood vessels are separated from the surface by a single layer of columnar epithelium. These features will give the endocervix its characteristic colposcopic appearance. Under magnification, it looks like a red grape-like structure. Now let's examine the epithelial lining of the ectocervix. Ectocervix is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified means multiple layers. Resting on the basement membrane, a single layer of cuboidal cells with large nucleus are present. These cells are called basal cells and forming basal cell layer. Here is a histologic picture of the basal cell layer where you can see the cuboidal cells with large nucleus. The function of basal cells is similar to the reserve cells of the endocervix, I mean they divide and multiply. When basal cells divide, the older ones will move towards the surface. And during their movement, they will become larger forming a new type of cells called parabasal cells. There are about 5 to 10 layers of parabasal cells forming a parabasal cell layer. With increasing maturation, the intermediate cells are formed, which occupy about 15 to 30 layers, forming the intermediate cell layer. Here is a histologic picture of the intermediate cell layer, which contains light cytoplasm and small nuclei. With increasing immaturity, the superficial layer will be formed, which contains squamous cells. Squamous cells are flat cells with abundant cytoplasm and very small nuclei. Now let's examine the junction between squamous and the columnar epithelium. It's formed during fetal life, and that's why it's called original or congenital squamocolumnar junction. 
It's an abrupt junction with no transition between the two types of epithelium. I mean, once squamous epithelium and columnar epithelium will start. The location of squamo-columnar junction is variable because during the times of excess estrogen, the cervix will grow and consequently will avert. The cervix will grow and consequently will avert, bringing a part of the endocervical tissue outside the level of external loss. Aversion is simply defined as the presence of endocervical tissue outside the external loss. This averted part of the ectocervix is known as ectrobium. Now the columnar epithelium of ectrobium become exposed to vaginal medium. This columnar epithelium is sensitive to the acidity of vaginal medium and will be damaged and replaced by squamous epithelium in a process known as squamous metaplasia. Metaplasia means transformation of one mature form of epithelium into another mature form of epithelium. And in the cervical condition, it means transformation of columnar epithelium into a squamous epithelium. Squamous metaplasia is a patchy process. I mean, to start initially in the crypt and at the tips of the villus part. Then they fuse together. Squamous metaplasia has three stages. Stage 1, called reserve cell hyperplasia, when reserve cells under columnar epithelium start to divide. Second stage, when reserve cells proliferate to form multiple layers of immature, undifferentiated parabasal cells. And still a layer of columnar epithelium can often be seen on the surface. This stage is called immature squamous metaplasia. The last step is a stage of mature squamous metaplasia, where immature cells differentiate into mature squamous epithelium, which nearly cannot be differentiated from the original squamous epithelium. And now, a new squamo-columnar junction has been formed. And the area of epithelium that develops squamous metaplasia is called transformation zone. In other words, the transformation zone is defined as the area between the original and the new squamo-columnar junction. Transformation zone is the area where most, if not all, cervical cancers develop and it is characterized by two features. Number one, into cervical crypt openings. Here is a corposcopic picture of transformation zone where you can see the opening of into cervical crypts. The second feature is nabuthium follicles. During squamous metaplasia, Squamous cells may cover functional columnar cells and the mucus secretions may accumulate inside, forming a cyst called Nabothian cyst. Clinically, it looks smooth, clear, white or yellow rounded elevations on the cervix. During ultrasound examination, it looks a well-defined anechoic rounded areas along the endocervical canal. And finally, there are three types of transformation zone. Type 1. The transformation zone is completely ectocervical and fully visualized during colposcopic examination. Type 2. Transformation zone has endocervical components but is still fully visualized.
and in type 3, the transformation zone has endocervical component and the upper limit of transformation zone is not visualized during colposcopic examination.